I always remember her going up and telling her mum. And her mum, she said, oh, mum, I came to tell you that I've been found got positive for HIV. And she went, God, what a fright. She thought you were going to tell me you had cancer. That, that was a level of ignorance. That was a level. Where's your friend now? Dead. What's an AIDS death like? Um, terrifying. Heroin landed on Scotland, uh, and it landed hard. Scotland is facing a heroin epidemic. Figures show drug abuse has risen by over 40% in the last year. A number of different fronts came together to create the perfect storm in Edinburgh. Gay community transmitting virus amongst itself. Remember, quite a close-knit community, quite a geographically discreet community. And drug users who were getting the virus from sharing needles were going off and having, unbeknown to them, unsafe heterosexual sex with their partners or their girlfriends or boyfriends. I had conversations with other people and they were like, oh, this is going to be bad. We weren't quite aware of just how awful it was going to be um, because we didn't know then that all these people would go on to develop AIDS if, if they had no treatment. People get frightened with infections, particularly when doctors say, we don't know what the hell this is and we don't know how to cure it and we do know it kills 100% of people get it. And I remember even one Tory MP or Tory councillor saying he thought that people who were diagnosed with this should be sent to an uninhabited Scottish island to live until we knew that society was safe. Dr. Death was one of the, one of the names that they, they would uh, give me. If you saw Dr. Brettel, you were probably gonna die, was the, 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 the viewpoint, which was pretty, pretty accurate, probably, um, for the first five years. This was what everybody else called it the AIDS ward. We called it Ward 14. <laughs> but everybody else called it an AIDS ward. This is the 15s on the right here, where the first uh, uh, children with HIV were cared for, uh, in that block there. It was a really nice hospital to work in. But when HIV came along, it was actually quite difficult because nobody really, they were quite happy for us to be up here in this corner and they definitely didn't want the patients wandering around in the rest of the hospital. There had for two decades been a really strong tradition of injecting drugs in Scotland, uh, particularly in Edinburgh, actually, um, which is sort of... Um, <laughs> it, it kind of fits because the hypodermic syringe was invented in Edinburgh, so why, why wouldn't it? It felt like... I imagine some sort of spiritual experience, like you've met God. I don't think I ever used a clean needle. If you developed a, a hundred pounds a day heroin addict, you had to steal thousands of pounds worth of goods in order to get a hundred pounds. Um, so we started to see housebreaking's going off the scale. We were catching them by the bucket load and they were going into to prison, but they just kept coming. It was almost as if it was a bottomless pit. The place had so much heroin that um, it was so easy to, to get a hold of. And at five pound a bag at the time, it was money that people managed to, um, to gather up and buy their bags. Oh my God. Oh, wow. I never used to be scared, but I'm scared now. Wow. But it looks beautiful. <laughs> it looks beautiful for up here. Big, big changes. It was Cod Terror Tower. A lot of drugs. This was a hellhole. It's not, it's not the Terror Tower I remember. It looks quite picturesque for here. It never looked like that when I was young. Hug. Hug, yes, well, mean. What do you remember? Not a lot. I mean, I try not to think about it, I suppose. I do remember seeing you, because I was in and out to see Raymond, and you just looked haunted. Yeah. Yeah. Sh shattered. 
I retired on ill health grounds 10 years ago, and that was because I was burnt out. You know, I, 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 I could not carry on looking after that many people who were dying, I think. I think I called you Dr. Death. Yes. <laughs> yeah. People call me that, yeah? Yeah. I'm sure as a doctor, he found the work incredibly difficult. He was a very dedicated um, professional. He fought for people's lives right up to the end. I mean, he wouldn't go home if somebody was dying. He wouldn't go home if somebody was really ill. So I want you to know that I'm really sorry for that. Oh, thank you. I'm really sorry. Mm -hmm. My problem is I can't say sorry to anybody because they're dead. Most of the ones you want to say sorry to. Thank I you really for being do. a patient. <laughs> As in, yeah. a good patient. And a patient that survived, mm. which is, there aren't that many around.